Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Hamad Youssef. His Royal Highness, the Deputy King, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, chaired the weekly cabinet meeting at Dhabiya Palace. The cabinet emphasized the importance of the meeting held between His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the President of Egypt, Abdel Fattah al Sisi, in Sharm el Sheikh. The cabinet noted the two countries' desire to improve cooperation across areas of common interests. The cabinet highlighted the significance of the tripartite summit between His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, His Majesty the King of Jordan, His Majesty King Abdullah II ibn Al Hussein, and the President of Egypt. The cabinet took the opportunity to commend the summit for its contribution to strengthening Arab national security, collective Arab action and efforts to combat terrorism and maintain regional security and stability. The cabinet then extended its gratitude to their highnesses, excellencies, deputy prime ministers and previous ministers for their contributions to the kingdom's achievements. His Royal Highness the Deputy King welcomed the new cabinet members and directed them to double efforts to further develop government work streams and enhance the quality of government services provided to citizens. In this regard, His Royal Highness stressed that efforts should be focused on development initiatives and projects that will provide Bahraini citizens with promising opportunities and the economic recovery plan's progress should take priority. His Royal Highness noted that Bahrain is home to an open environment that values safety, security and ambition, factors that will encourage new cabinet members to achieve development goals. On behalf of the cabinet, the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister for Infrastructure, Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, expressed gratitude to His Majesty the King for forming the new cabinet. He conveyed his appreciation for His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister's investment in the Kingdom's workforce by appointing them to executive positions across the public sector. Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah recalled the Kingdom's pioneers who have had a profound impact on shaping government policy and Bahrain's development. The Deputy Prime Minister then renewed his pledge to His Majesty the King to continue team Bahrain's efforts to further the Kingdom's development and ensure challenges are turned into opportunities. The cabinet then praised the role of the Bahrain's press as a proactive par participant in the kingdom's development and congratulated the winners of the sixth edition of the Prime Minister's Award for Journalism. The cabinet commended the Ministry of Transportation and Telecommunications and Bahrain Airport Company for Bahrain International Airport being named as the world's best new airport by Skytrax 2022 World Airport Awards. The cabinet discussed and approved several memorandums during the meeting with the following outcomes. A memorandum by the Minister of Finance and National Economy regarding the Kingdom's quarterly economic report for Q1 of 2022. The report indicated that the national economy recorded an annual growth of 5.5% at constant prices during Q1 and the non-oil sector recorded growth of 7.8%. These positive outcomes reflect national efforts on financial sustainability and economic stability in accordance with the Economic Recovery Plan. A memorandum by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs presented by the Minister of Cabinet Affairs regarding three MOUs between the Ministry of Interior and the United States Department of Homeland Security designed to enhance cooperation between the two countries in relation to combating terrorist financing, cybersecurity and drone systems. A memorandum by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs presented by the Minister of Cabinet Affairs regarding the exemption of visa requirements for holders of diplomatic service and special passports between the government of the Kingdom of Bahrain and the government 
government of the Kyrgyz Republic. This is in addition to an MOU between the Ministries of Foreign Affairs of the two countries regarding political consultation. A memorandum by the Minister of Cabinet Affairs regarding the performance of government agencies in the Sigillat, Tawasal and Binayat portals during the second quarter of 2022. The efficiency and quality of government services provided to citizens and support for the Kingdom's commercial and investment activities were reviewed. A memorandum by the Minister of Cabinet Affairs regarding the Institutional Identity Guide for the Government of the Kingdom of Bahrain designed to unify the identity and branding of all ministries and government agencies. A memorandum by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs presented by the Minister of Cabinet Affairs regarding the government's response to six proposals submitted by the Council of Representatives. The Cabinet took note of ministerial reports on the meeting of the Bahraini British Ministerial Working Group participation in the 116th session of the Executive Council of the World Tourism Organization, the 12th Ministerial Conference of the World Trade Organization and the visit of the Deputy Prime Minister of the Slovak Republic to the Kingdom of Bahrain. His Royal Highness the Deputy King Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met with members of the cabinet at Glebiya Palace. His Royal Highness highlighted that the kingdom's future development is the shared responsibility of Team Bahrain and noted the importance of joint efforts to achieve the kingdom's wide-ranging economic goals. His Royal Highness emphasized the importance of efficiency, creativity and innovation when implementing government initiatives in line with the visions and aspirations of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. His Royal Highness noted that the principles of sustainability, competitiveness and fairness continue to guide the kingdom's ambitious development aspirations. In this regard, His Royal Highness the Deputy King reiterated that citizens are the greatest wealth of the kingdom, adding that united efforts are important to improve government services for citizens. He then directed the commencement of workshops to identify the key priorities that will shape the government's future aspirations. He noted the importance of doubling efforts to implement the remainder of the current government plan and the completion of the government priorities, framework, programs that benefit the kingdom and its people. For their part, the members of the cabinet expressed their thanks and appreciation for His Royal Highness's ongoing support to the public sector's ongoing commitment to development. They also pledged to continue working to achieve the kingdom's desired development goals in accordance with the aspirations of His Majesty the King. The Minister of Industry and Commerce, Zayed Zayani, participated as a guest speaker at a luncheon organized by the Bahrain British Business Forum in the presence of the British Ambassador to Bahrain, Roderick Drummond, and the Chairman of the Board of Directors of the Forum, Khalid Bar Rashid Zayani, and a number of officials and stakeholders. Zayani affirmed that the UK has been a major investment partner to Bahrain on a global scale for over 200 years, and that the growth and trade volume between both countries is witnessing remarkable development in various sectors, reflecting the significance of the distinguished historical bilateral relations. The minister reviewed a number of important and vital topics, including the results of the meeting of UK-Bahrain Joint Working Group, most importantly the FTA between the GCC and the UK, which is one of the most ambitious and comprehensive agreements which will contribute to strengthening relations and economic growth by promoting trade in goods and services. The Minister of Municipalities, Affairs and Agriculture, Wa'al Limbarak, headed Bahrain's delegation at the GCC Agricultural Meeting, which was held virtually. The Minister affirmed the Ministry's support, led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamid Al Khalifa, for joint Gulf action to contribute to the advancement of food security. He added that Bahrain stands with the GCC countries in supporting initiatives and programs that would benefit the sectors of agriculture, fisheries and livestock to contribute to increasing local production and boosting local sufficiency. The Minister of Health, Dr. Jalila Hassan, visited Bilal Al Qadim Health Center to inspect the latest developments and its expansion within the framework of following up on the developments of the self management project. She noted the government's keenness on developing health facilities in all health centers in Bahrain. She affirmed the need to redouble efforts to raise the level of health services provided to all citizens, which will contribute to supporting the goals of the comprehensive development process under the leadership of His Majesty the King and in accordance with the plans to develop the health sector within the government's efforts headed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. She highlighted the role played by the private sector and civil society institutions in supporting sustainable development endeavors and efforts.
Government hospitals have started operating the operating rooms in the evening hours seven days a week and performing optional operations on Saturdays. This new step comes with the aim of reducing waiting lists and for beneficiaries to obtain services at the appropriate times for them. The hospitals began to work with the optional operations project on Saturdays and in order to raise the level of health services provided and develop them in an accelerated and continuous manner which represents an updated model for the purpose of reducing the waiting list of patients. Government hospitals are also preparing to inaugurate four new surgical operating rooms equipped with the latest technologies and services as part of the development plan approved with the aim of upgrading the health system. The Information and Government Authority issued its report on foreign trade statistics for the month of May of this year. The report includes data on imports, exports and re-exports in addition to the trade balance. The report stated that during the month of May, the value of total merchandise imports amounted to around 518 million Bahraini dinars compared to 402 million for the same period last year, an increase of 29%. On the other hand, the value of locally made exports increased by 62%, reaching 460 million compared to 283 million for the same period last year. As for re-exports, their value increased by 5%, reaching 57 million compared to 55 million of the same period last year. And for more about this, we are joined over the phone by representative from Planning and Market Intelligence at Export Bahrain, Ms. Rabab Khalaf. Hello, Ms. Rabab. Can you tell us about Bahrain's efforts that led to such an increase in exports and how this can further boost the national economy? Good evening. Uh, firstly, I would like to thank you for inviting me and Export Bahrain on tonight's show to speak about the uh, current developments with exports in the kingdom. It's a pleasure to be here with you. To dive into your question, yes, uh, Bahrain has launched and developed many programs and initiatives in the recent years. Export Bahrain being one of them, of course, uh, to act as the national export development and internationalization support arm of the kingdom with the purpose and objective to promote, nurture, and accelerate the growth of local businesses, products, and services that are made in Bahrain, and to enable exporters uh, to take on more challenging, high-growth export markets. We have witnessed it even amid a global pandemic that products and services uh, made in Bahrain are in high demand within international markets. And because of that demand, we have developed a diversified portfolio of solutions and services that we provide Bahrain-based businesses to support and ease their export journey. As for the second part of your question, the national economy, with no doubt, is reaping the benefits from the export deals that are currently in place as it is directly correlated to the surge and uplift in numbers as more and more deals with regional and international buyers are being facilitated through innovative and research-oriented orient solutions which will surely benefit all exporters in the kingdom and of course the economy itself. So just to give you a quick glimpse our export credit insurance solution allows businesses to approach international buyers and explore new markets with confidence. In addition to our export shipping and logistics solutions where exporters uh, will be able to lower their shipping and handling costs below market rates. On the other hand, e-commerce is a major influence on the current market trends with our e-commerce facilitation solution which provides exporters the opportunity to list their products and services on prominent world-renowned online platforms, along with our newly announced Build Your Store solution, which is one shop, one-stop shop solution to develop an e-commerce website, including a fully functional payment gateway that accepts multiple currencies. So together with all other solutions, we are highly committed towards boosting our national exports, taking pride in Bahrain-based brands, and showcasing its value globally, all in a way that will reflect positively on our national economy. As much as I would be happy to go on with the many solutions we have available to our exporters, I would like to end by sending a message to all Bahrain-based businesses to get in touch with Export Bahrain for all their export requirements to unlock their full potential and reach international markets. You can do that by calling us directly on 173839 or visit our offices at the Bahrain Financial Harbor. And of course, please follow us on our social media at Export Bahrain to stay updated with the latest Export Bahrain news. And thank you so much. The representative from Planning and Market Intelligence at Export Bahrain, Ms. Rabab Khalaf, thank you for joining us. 
The Bahrain Authority for Culture and Antiquities held a press conference and announced the activities of the summer festival that will be held next July. The Bahrain Summer Festival returns again this year in its 14th edition under the slogan Golden Edition that celebrates Bahraini achievements, diverse cultural activities, entertainment programs and a variety of theatrical performances to be held. This edition will focus on cultural events and their way of creating a space for cultural exchange between the Kingdom of Bahrain and various civilizations, especially since the Saudi heritage will be present throughout the days of the festival. This festival has become a unique and successful model on the Gulf and Arab levels. Yeah, it's a great honor and privilege uh, to be part of uh, this meaningful event, the Bahrain Summer Festival 2022. And uh, this time, Korean performance will be you know, top-notch street dance uh, performances. As you know, the, this uh, uh, performance group is called uh, Makers. They got uh, multiple awards from the international competition in the street dance areas. So I believe they will perform, you know, like a brilliant performance about the street dance. And also they will cooperate, collaborate with the Korean traditional music. The Syrian President Bashar al-Assad received the credentials of Ambassador Wahid Mubarak Sayyar as Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary of Bahrain in Damascus. This took place at the People's Palace in the presence of the Syrian Minister of Foreign Affairs and Expatriates Dr. Faisal Maqdad and the Minister of Presidential Affairs Masoor Azam. The Ambassador conveyed the greetings of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa al-Khalifa and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad al-Khalifa and their wishes of further progress and prosperity to Syria and its people. The Syrian President requested the Ambassador to convey his greetings to His Majesty and His Royal Highness and his wishes for further progress and prosperity for the kingdom and its people. He also wished the ambassador success in carrying out his diplomatic duties.